Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm taking this image from Everyday Magic, which is the Moon Fairy, and I'm just going to color. Actually, this is the outtakes. Well, not even outtakes. This is all of the footage from the other video that I made about coloring supplies. So this video is going to be long. It's going to be in real time. So if you have about an hour, pull up a chair, maybe some colored pencils, and I'm just going to color this whole time. So maybe get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, um, a pina colada if you're somewhere nice and warm and sitting by the ocean. Because it's not like that here today. It is almost June. I'm in New Jersey and it snowed two weeks ago. It's raining today and I don't think it's really even been higher than 75 degrees at this point. So I'm very jealous of anybody who's sitting there out in the sun and nice and warm and cozy. As I was using this purple color from the Polychromo set, I realized that it reminded me of a long time ago when I used to be a professional makeup artist. I don't know if you knew this about me, but that was my career before I was an artist. I used to do makeup for many things, weddings, any kind of celebration, and then eventually uh, commercials, photo shoots, things like that. And sometimes colored pencils and art supplies remind me of makeup because when I first started, everybody told me that I had to use MAC makeup. You have to go to the village, go on Perry Street and go to the MAC store. So I was so excited because I, I, I was so young. I was 19 years old. So I went there with money and uh, was shocked to find how little I could buy from the MAC store. And they were talking about false eyelashes and all the things that I loved, but I could barely buy enough to make myself a kit. And of course, back then, I didn't have enough money to, to, buy, to buy the whole set of anything from there. I couldn't even buy enough eyeshadows to complete an eye. So anyway, my point is that I learned very quickly that I was going to have to make do with other things. So I tried a lot of this stuff out there. Um, I, they, they did give me some samples because they were relatively a new company too. And they were trying to get their name out there. So I left with some samples and a couple of products that I was told, you know, the true makeup artist couldn't live without. Well, some of those products I found I could easily replace with products that were 10 times less expensive sometimes 20 times less expensive um there were other companies out there too chanel is notoriously priced very high as a makeup well as as anything as a clothing store as a as a clothing designer um jewelry uh I have a relative that used to work for Chanel and would bring home belts and clothes and all kinds of products. And I couldn't use all of them, first of all, because they were getting them at super discount prices because they were either extras from the warehouse, etc. So I would get them. They might not be my size. People would spend so much money, even on samples even on stuff that had already been worn, used. So uh, some of it was beautiful. Some of it, I felt like it wasn't any better than anything, once again, that I could get for 20 times less. I think that sometimes I felt like I was paying for the name, and I probably was. I started to discover other makeup supplies. For instance... There's a black, I think it's still on the market today. There's a black Maybelline, I don't know if it's an eyeliner or an eyebrow pencil. It, it used to be a little tiny red pencil, and I think you could get it for about $1.49 for two. 
at Grant's when I was a kid. And it wasn't the best until you burned the tip of it. So if you burnt the tip, the product got a little bit softer. And so it not only went on like a dream, you couldn't burn it too much, couldn't make it too soft, but just enough to soften it a bit. So all makeup artists had lighters or matches with them at all times for a while, especially if they were just starting, because that product was so much cheaper. And it, when you burned it a little bit, it was just as good as that as that coveted black MAC pencil. So, yes, I'm using my favorite colored pencils here, which happen to be polychromos, and even they're not perfect, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Now, I don't know if you remember when we were kids, everybody got that box of crayons and they kind of had a flat side to them so they wouldn't roll off our desks. I think there was eight crayons in the box. And even as a very little kid, I was, I was into pencils and pens and writing and art. And I realized that certain colors felt better to color with. And in that box, and even in the Crayola box, even, you know, the, the big 64 set when we got older, the purples were so nice to color with. And I can only attribute that to the fact that there's something in purple pigment that lends itself to a really smooth, soft kind of feel when you're using it in crayons. Now, those, those flat-sided crayons in that very strange little box, I, it was a two-piece box. You actually had a top that would come off the box. You could put it underneath, unlike... The crayons today, where it's a one-piece box and you just open up the top, those crayons were harder and they were almost like thick and dense colored pencils. They were, they were about twice as thick as a regular pencil, um, but they were, they were much less waxy and much more pencil-like. I, I wish I could get my hands on a set of those just to see if my, if my memory serves me. So yes, going back to these pencils, I do love polychromos pencils. They're soft yet hard at the same time. And if anybody knows what I'm talking about, talk to me down in the information box because it's very strange because they are, they're harder than Prismacolors, but they're so creamy. They hold a point the colors are intense and the quality is the same throughout all the colors in the entire set which I can't say about every set out there I also think I like the fact that the barrel is a little bit thicker though I know not everybody has Prismacolors I'm sorry Polychromos pencils but even if you have a few of them, let me know what you think of them. So winding all the way back around to what I was saying in the beginning that coloring supplies kind of remind me of makeup. There are things that, there are things that you can't get out of every single set, meaning even the Prismacolor, uh, the, the Polychromos pencils, like I was saying before, aren't perfect. For instance, the, the pinks are very warm pink. And you can't, there's, there's not really like a light ballet slipper pink or a cooler pink, like a rose color. And that's missing in, in the set and a couple other things too but I can't remember off the top of my head so you have to look elsewhere so for that I would either look to Prismacolors and lately I've been using Castle Art as a replacement because they have really really interesting 
colors. I can't say that the quality is just like the polychromos or just like the Prismacolor, but sometimes the trade-off is worth it. So just like the trade-off for the black eyeliner that I found, like I had a, sh I, I had a, not sharpen it. What am I trying to say? Oh, I had to burn it with, with the, with the lighter. Sometimes you sort of have to balance things out a little bit. And you know what? Same thing with a watercolor set. Uh, watercolors drive me crazy more than anything because there are so many options that unless you buy a set that's literally on a palette, it can be really frustrating to go into a store and know what colors to buy in those little tiny tubes. It's not as easy as, as you think. You know what? I just want to talk about what I'm doing right here. I... I try to take my time with hair and do little individual lines, even with animal hair, because the, sh the sharper the point and the longer I seem to take with hair, the better it comes out. And that's another thing that I want to say. You've probably heard me say this a hundred times if you watch my videos. If you don't like the way whatever you're coloring looks, it probably just means you're not done. You know what? I'm going to compare this again to makeup or cosmetics or being a makeup artist. I remember the very first time I went to a very fancy studio. I was scared to death. I had my supplies or I thought I had enough supplies and I I was so nervous that I kept just wanting to finish. It, the first girl, I, I think she was 14 years old, cute as a button, and she had a giant scar going like like from well, kind of near her collarbone on her chest a bit, and I had to cover it. So I tried foundation and powder and concealer, and I was a nervous wreck, and I just wanted to get it done because I kind of wanted some kind of approval, you know, because I never worked with this photographer before. I never worked with her assistant before. Obviously, it was the first time I was ever in this gorgeous, white, light-filled, 50-foot ceiling studio in downtown Manhattan. And same thing. I, I was in a nervous hurry. So what I was doing, I, uh, my mind was more occupied with getting it done quickly and getting it done right and making everybody happy. And then as soon as I stood back, took a deep breath and, you know, kind of had to say to myself, okay, what would you actually be doing if you were at home and relaxed? So I took another look at it and I just had to take my time. So that's another thing that you can apply to coloring, you know, rather than beating yourself up because you don't like the way it looks or it's taking you so long. I think that it, it should be, I think, well, I don't think coloring should be anything. I, it's, it's your thing. It can be anything you want it to be, but I do all I'm, all I'm trying to say is I just don't think you should ever, you know, try to rush it or beat yourself up because it doesn't look perfect. Just take your time and You know, just like with his hair and even those flowers, don't be afraid to do layer after layer and do it the way you want to do it. Don't try to, you don't have to color like somebody else. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I don't want, I, I see people stressing out over coloring some sometimes and I, I don't want that to happen because it's such a fun and nice thing and it's totally yours. So take your time is all I'm saying. I keep going back to makeup because I, I got the idea in my head. And uh, I hope you're not 
bored to death as I'm, as I'm talking about this, but that was a big part of my life for five minutes back, back in the day. So, um, it's interesting how many things are comparable to actual art. I mean, yes, it is an art form, I guess you're, you're, you're transforming someone and, uh, making them look completely different. You can make someone look younger, make them look older, completely do um, a, a completely different look. You can make someone look like a cat. You can, oh my gosh, you can change so much. It was, it, that, that was all fun. Sometimes I think that I am going to make another YouTube channel and do makeup for mature, mature people, mature skin, mat mostly mature women, because that's what I was most familiar with. Yes, I did some men occasionally when I worked for Sony and I had to do commercials, and, but that was mostly keeping executives fresh looking underneath spotlights and filming lights. So for the most part, it was making, making women over. Um, I think that would be fun. I have no idea if anybody would watch that, but I think for me, for certain, it would be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll do a makeup video and just see how it goes. It sounds fun. I would probably do the makeup on myself or on my very pretty sister. Hmm. Let me know. Let me know. Anyway, back to the drawing. You know, I didn't use the Polychromos pencils to color skin tone because they do not have my favorite skin tones, I must say. Their colors, flesh, medium flesh, dark flesh, it, they're, they're, I, I, they're not quite weird, but they're very, very pink. And I have a pink skin tone, but not that pink. And it isn't even sunburn pink, it's sort of carnation pink. And like I said before, polychromos isn't perfect and that's one of the things that I'm not nuts about. That and their other pinks are very warm. I think I said that before. So I'm not sure. I know in the past that pigments used to be more vibrant, brighter, because they were allowed to use substances in the pigments that are not allowed to be used today. For example, there was there were certain reds that are completely off the market now because they found they were carcinogenic a very long time ago. Whoop, that's me just using the fan to dry out the um, terpenoid. A long time ago, they were trying to make a green color and certain designers were trying to get this gorgeous, rich green. And, and it was a problem to say the least. In the Victorian era, this beautiful green known as Shields Green or Schloss Green was very popular and it was used in everything from wallpaper to paint and even in the color of these beautiful gowns. This later became known as arsenic green because arsenic was used in the creation of the color. Uh, it, as we all know now, is very poisonous and it was even used at one point, I'm pretty sure, as a coloring for candies. It, by the 18, I think by the 1800, the late 1800s, it would, uh, the toxicity of uh, arsenic was well known and 
those two colors were replaced. There's emerald green, which was also known as Paris, Paris green, was developed to try to improve Shields green. There were stories of uh, women uh, passing out in the heat, possibly because the arsenic became uh, a, a gas and they inhaled it, possibly it, it got mixed with the heat of their bodies and the sweat and maybe caused them to absorb it right through their skin. Yeah, so <laughs> there's, my, there's my happy thought for the day. But I have to tell you, that green is gorgeous. It's sort of like that mystical fairy absinthe green, and I still love it, so I understand why people were kind of obsessed. I could be very happy living in that room, that very strange green color. You know what else is interesting? I was just thinking, is it a coincidence that if you envision a, a, a poisonous substance, let's say a cauldron or um, a bottle with the skull and crossbones on it, and some of the poisonous vapors would come out, wouldn't you envision it in with that same kind of arsenic slash absinthe kind of kind of green? I I don't think I don't think that's a coincidence. Oh, and you know, this is making me think of another thing. I would probably think that there were more problematic pigments out there beyond red and beyond that specific Shields green and Paris green. In fact, I know black pigment in hair dye was an issue and they had to change that. I think that was in the 70s or the 80s, meaning more more recently. But that's making me wonder if you know, way back, if people like Van Gogh, who was using all these pigments, and we we weren't as careful, we didn't know better than to be careful about certain things. I wonder if he felt some of his depression or um, some of his mental problems because of the pigments or the dangerous substances within the pigments that he was that he was using. I don't, I don't know. I would have to look it up. Interesting thought though. Okay. I promise I will only talk about non-depressing stuff for the rest of the video. I was just kind of going stream of consciousness and thinking, and I figured I would tell you what I was thinking. So back to the skin. As you can see, I'm using different pencils. The ones with the black barrel are all castle art. And like I said before, I'm not crazy about the polychromos skin tones. Well, the light skin tones anyway. I do love their browns and beiges and honey colors. Those are beautiful. But the very lights, eh, not my cup of tea. Here's another thing. Those two sets worked really nicely together. I went over the top of both of them with various pencil choices and I had no problem doing any part of this image. So I have a question for you. Do any of you find that when you're coloring, specifically with colored pencils, I haven't found this with any other medium. I don't get it with watercolor or any other kind of paints and especially not with markers because you have to move so fast with the markers that it's, that's, it's almost nerve wracking. And I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but they're, they are not my favorite, but I have a love-hate with pencils, mostly a love, but 
a little bit of hate just because it takes forever. It's a really long process to do a beautiful picture with colored pencils. But do any of you ever find that while you're using them, you kind of go into a zone, kind of almost, it's almost meditative. I feel very relaxed and not all the time, not when I'm doing like very specific little details or, but when I'm doing an area like this, when it's one color and I kind of have to go over and over in those little itty bitty circles, especially with, I, I don't know why, but with the polychromos pencils, I kind of go, I kind of go into a zone and, uh, I wonder if that's really all meditation is. So if I'm not doing a video, especially, and I'm drawing or coloring, even if I have the TV on in the background or if I have some music on, and I really don't listen to music that much other than classical, because anything with words kind of throws me off, especially if I already know the words. So... If it's a song that I'm already familiar with, that I already like, now that's usually the kind of music that you want to hear, but I can't do it because for some reason I have another, I have another loop playing at, at the same time. And uh, it sort of interferes with the process. I had a friend say to me once, why can't you just talk to me on the phone while you're, while you're drawing? Meaning if I'm illustrating a book or something. I, and I don't know why I can't. It's the same feeling as if I was typing something or if I was writing something. There's too much going on. But if there's a nice big area that I'm coloring like this, like this pink, and it's just one kind of solid piece, yeah, that's when that uh, spacey meditation happens. I think it's very cool. Let me know if, if, if that's ever happened to you or if it's just me. That's the Prismacolor, the Prismacolor blender, colorless blender. Someone told me in the comments from the art supplies video, I think it was Fern, that, um, sorry, this chair's very squeaky, um, that the there's a Derwent white pencil called China White, and she said it was awesome. So I'm going to have to try that. Because I was always a fan of these. Oh, wait a minute. Am I getting two things confused? She either said the Derwent China White or possibly the Derwent Colorless Blender. I will have to look back and I'll get back to you. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. Now, Fern said she likes the Caran d'Ache Blender Stick much better than the Prismacolor Colorless Blender. And she thinks it's smoother and not as scratchy as the Prismacolor blender. And she thinks that it leaves the colors even brighter. So I totally have to try that. And then the other one was from Deirdre Lewis. And she said the Derwent drawing pencil in Chinese white works great for blending and lightening colors. And she said their black is very intense as well. And she said they're cheaper than Luminance. And so, of course, I have to try those two. And someone else suggested today that I do a video comparing white colored pencils. I guess I would do that on black paper, either that or toned gray or sepia paper. And also black colored pencils. I think that's a great idea too because I have a thing about black colored pencils and the blacker, the better. Some of them just don't have enough pigment and they come out, you know, like those colored pencils we used when we were kids. So yeah, I would actually like to know that myself. Even a, even a couple of the less expensive sets that I've been using lately, um, Castle Art for one, has had really high 
pigmented black pencils. Polychromos, for sure, is jet black. Prismacolor, jet black. And everything else, I think that I would have to, I would have to look and probably, you know, put them all on paper and try them out. Oh, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. What do you all feel about movability of the pigment once you lay it down on the paper? I feel that certain pencils, if you if you touch it, it will smear so easily. I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, I guess that's great for blendability, but yes, I guess you can always put a fixative on top of it, but I don't know if that makes for lines of demarcation in your finished product. So if any of you have input on that, I would like to know that too. Also, I think that the Prismacolor leaves a shinier finish than the Polychromos pencils do. And that's without putting anything on top. No fixative, nothing, just the way it is. Okay, so I just decided to look up the, the black pigment. And yes, several articles said traditional hair dyes, especially blacks, meaning black hair dyes are made up of a lot of harsh chemicals. Uh, some of them open the scales on the hair, meaning the cuticle, and that allows the hair dye to enter the strand. So they would wonder, you know, if it's doing that to your hair, what's it doing to your scalp? Also, some people have allergic reactions. So anyway, they were trying to make a more green version of black. And some, some scientists in Illinois have developed an environmentally friendly hair dye that delivers a, supposedly a very stunning black color from black carbon, which is the same ingredient that's in soot and in pencil lead. So I thought that was pretty neat. And that's a good thing because some people dye their hair often. If you if you have white hair growing in and you want your hair to be dark, you can curl your hair up to every three weeks. So the greener, the better. So in this part of the video, I was filling in her dress. And what I was trying to do was make the dress sort of have an ombre look. So it started out light on top. It looks a little bit darker around her waist because I figured that area would be cinched and fabric, if it was real fabric, would be laying on top of itself. So it would give the illusion, even if it was lighter pink, to be slightly darker pink because of the shadows. So to give the illusion of the ombre on the bottom part of the skirt, I used progressively darker pencils. So it went from sort of fuchsia to um, maybe darker fuchsia to a purple to a plum to a really dark purple. And then on the inside or the underneath part of the dress, I used a dark blue to give the illusion of a shadow. I liked the way it was looking, except for the fact that it looked grainy because the paper in this book, this is from one of my artist edition books, the paper is gorgeous. It's acid free, it's mixed media paper, but it has, which I, which I like, it has some grain to it. So my solution to that is I take a brush and I dip it in terpenoid, which is odorless mineral spirits, as probably most of you know, and I just go over the top, <coughs> excuse me, and blend. And as you can see, it almost turns into like a watercolor look and it becomes so smooth and all of those little white imbrications and not that they're details, but they just go away and it's 
a form of burnishing because you are filling in the tooth of the paper. So I really like the way that ombre turned out. Oh, you know what? See the stars in, in her hands? I always have an issue with stars. I don't know what that is. I forget that they glow. I forget that they're there. Um, so a lot of times around the stars, I either have to go back in and erase a little bit of the color, which actually I found out today works out fine. So as you can see there, there was pink. I went back, I erased it a little bit, blended it in with the turpenoid, and then right about here, I filled in the star with yellow, and the area around it was a little bit lighter than the rest of it, meaning the rest of the pink, and it sort of gave the illusion that the star was glowing. I, I gave, I was, I was gonna say I gave it a thumbs up, <laughs> but I was actually really happy with how it turned out. And it was and it was pretty easy to do. See, that's a little bit of a lighter yellow, so there's a little bit of a difference between the star on her hand and the yellow surrounding it. So it looked more like a soft glow. So I wanted to lighten up the top so it looked even more ombre. So I chose the Luminance white colored pencil and I always thought that was the best colored pencil, but someone told me today that Derwent has a wonderful white and also a wonderful black. So yeah, we, we have to try those because as of right now, the Luminance is my holy grail. I was thinking about this the other day. I think that I actually had to come to terms with colored pencils especially after you, you, you're you used to using something like Conti Pastel pencils or watercolor, it's so much faster. And then you use colored pencils and everybody seems to love coloring with colored pencils the most. I, I put videos out sometimes about watercolor, about other mediums, but the colored pencils are always the biggest hit. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, I, I, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to guess. It, I just find them, I just, I think that you can't go fast with them, no matter what. I don't have any tricks to speed up the process. I don't, I don't know if there are any real tricks. I just think that, like me, you kind of have to come to terms with the fact that it's going to take a long time. I'm doing her little knees now. I drew the picture like she was sort of sitting on her legs. And um, I, I just, I didn't really spend that much time fussing with this. I just used some colors, uh, I'm sorry, some skin colors, and then right underneath the top of the dress, I just added a little bit of a darker color and around the bottom also, where there would be shadows. And at this point, I'm also putting shadows other places too. I'm kind of looking around, putting a shadow underneath her hand, and I'm not using, and I hardly ever use, the same color for all shadows, meaning I'm not going to pick a black or I'm not going to pick a gray. I'll try to use a darker version of the color that I'm drawing on. For example, on her skirt, rather than using a black for a shadow, I would use a plum or a darker purple. Ooh, dare I say, is this that absinthe arsenic green that we were talking about before? Pretty close. Now, all I was doing here in the video was going over some of the stars and the details that I colored over with the pink and the colors in her hair because there's supposed to be stardust falling from the flower above the moon fairy. 
So rather than leave them all opened, I just colored over them with the regular colors and I figured I would go over them with either the Signo gel pen or a Posca pen. And I think I actually even found a paint pen. And you know what? I have mentioned several things in this video. I'll put all the information in the information box below in case every, anybody wants to buy any of this. I have to say, those gel pens, especially the Signo, I've had luck with it, but somebody just told me today that they're not great. So be forewarned, they're not the best over Prismacolors, meaning Prismacolor pencils. Um, so here I was using Polychromos and I was using Castle Art, so it was working fine. Now the Posca pen sometimes I feel like soaks in a little bit and softens up. But in general, both of them work really well. You know, I just had a thought. I don't know if the Signo makes gel pens in any other color. You know what? That was the Posca. Let me let me go check. I'll be right back. Well, I should have figured they had other colors. Here is a set of pastels. Here is a set of super ink, which looks like regular colors to me, reds and oranges. So I've never used them, but I don't know why in my head Sig Signo only made a white gel pen. But you know what? That's something... That's going to be for another video because I definitely have to try them now. Well, we're coming near to the end of this, and I wanted to show you how I did these wings. At the last minute, I decided that I was going, that I was going to do them to make them look like leaves. I was pondering doing, uh, doing them with like very shiny paint. Be, you know, and make them sort of look translucent and sparkly and beautiful. But I figured I would show this one trick that I sort of figured out with Guanghui pencils a long time ago. These aren't Guanghui, and they don't work as, this trick doesn't work as well for some reason with better pencils. And it's probably because the Guanghui and the less expensive pencils have more filler. So what I would do with Lee for, for leaves with the Guanghui pencils is that you make you draw the veins and you push relatively hard with the lighter color, either a yellow or a very light greenish yellow, whatever color you like, you can make leaves any color you want, but take the lighter color and draw the veins first, which which sort of sounds counterintuitive. And then after you draw the veins, any way you like, you can take a darker color and you can draw right over the top of the yellow and the yellow veins stay yellow. The pigment can't, the pigment doesn't show up over the already burnished, less expensive pencil and bad in most cases, but really good in the case of the veins in leaves. And it does work to a point with the better pencils, but not, not quite as wonderfully because it takes a lot more to get that burnishing effect with, with the more expensive pencils. Now, in this case... The yellow is surrounded by lines. You don't have to have the lines, it, it, meaning if there's just the outline of a leaf and you don't want to just make it one solid color, you can use that trick to make your own veins of any color. But like I said, the lighter colors do work better. Now, at first I was using a very light spring green on the upper wings. I didn't want both wings to look exactly the same. And 
I was being a little careful here. I wasn't going over the top like I would with a Guanghui set or even Crayolas or Prang just because the colors are a little bit softer and like I said, it will go over the top of the yellow a bit. So I was being a little careful here. And this is a little faster at this point because I took a very long time to do this in the real world and you'll get the idea of what I'm doing pretty quickly. So I filled it in. I ended up using probably two or three, maybe even four greens. Um, and I think I used all polychromos pencils for the wings. At first I went right up to the edge with the green and then I realized I wanted it to be a little bit more dimensional. So I ended up erasing some of it. It wasn't that much of a big deal. But I did want there to be that yellow around the perimeter, especially on the top wings, because I decided, whoop, there I am erasing that part so I can make that more yellow. Because I wanted there to be almost the illusion of the moon shining down on the wings and the sky in the background, I decided would be very, very dark blue. So the lighter the color next to the blue, the better. And then on the other side of the coin, I made the leaves on the bottom a little bit darker and more intense in general, because the color that they were gonna be sitting next to was going to be sort of a golden green. I actually think the color from the polychromo set is gold green. And that's what I was gonna use on the ground. So I chose to make the, the leaves on the bottom a more solid and more deep color. So I finished coloring the bottom leaves with that same green. And then I went back up in the upper leaves or wings and I added more detail and more veins just to make it a little more dramatic. I didn't have to, it was basically done, but I always find myself going back in. It's that, that same saying I always say, you know, it's probably not done. And I keep doing it until I at least like it. Oop, now I'm taking the turpenoid with my old faithful brush and I'm just going over the top of the leaves or the wings and making them look smooth and pretty and uh, getting close to the finish line at this point. I have to finish the other, the other wing on the bottom. Oh, here's a little bit of the extra detail in real time. So you can see it was nothing fancy. It was just making more lines, making more veins than was already there. And then I just chose one blue for the background and I left a little, a little perimeter of white around the dark flowers on her head so they would stand out a little bit more. And at first I made kind of wide circles around the stars that were in the sky or the stars and the fairy dust that was falling out of the flower above her. I ended up changing my mind and bringing the blue right around the perimeter of, of the stars. I thought it, it, it looked a little too vague and fuzzy. You, you see what I'm doing there? Like I left those shiny areas or areas that would appear to be shiny. I, did, I didn't leave them. And happily, I didn't push that hard that I could go back in and fix that. And I, I, 
I was going to say I probably ended up using two layers, but what I did was I put the first layer down and then I blended and then I went back over the top with the exact same color. And it ended up to look dimensional somehow. And uh, I didn't want it to be too busy because I knew it was going to be the thumbnail for the video anyway. Oh, there's, there's the blue with the turpenoid blender. And I think that is, I, I can never get over that effect because these are not watercolor pencils. So you can see where I went closer with the stars. Oop, there's the, there's the glass. And I'm just going to do some blending up on top. So that's about it for now. Thank you for watching this video. Um, the beginning was me talking away and, you know, talking about art and some of my past lives. And then about halfway through, I decided to talk about coloring, meaning what I, what I was coloring. I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think. This was a big experiment. And, um, if you'd like to see more of this, if it was too long, if it was too short, if you prefer the chatting about life format or you like the coloring or if you'd like to see it mixed together, I would love to know your input. So that's it. And I hope that you'll give this video a like because every time I get a like or a comment, it helps get these videos in front of more people, YouTube shows them around even more. So maybe somebody else might get to see it that likes it. And uh, I want to say I appreciate all your comments and I appreciate you watching my videos. You can see the, um, the green gold ground underneath her wings. I did put some shadows. So that's it for now. I thank you in advance for the likes and the comments. And thank you for being here and watching my videos. Bye-bye.